All right, everybody, welcome back to another video episode of uh, reading Siach Sarfi Kodesh. That's what we do on Sundays. Siach Sarfi Kodesh is a breath of safer um, of uh, stories and biographies and customs and traditions and basically all of oral breast of history. I already did like five videos on this, and today we're going to do another video. Keep on reading. Um, I actually just made a video about this uh, about a few minutes ago, but I stopped in the middle because I realized that one of the stories that I was reading I didn't understand, and the next story that I read I messed up on, so I'm just going to start again. I'm going to skip that one story um, because I don't. Really, it's not It's not really clear what was going on in it, but we're going to start with Kuf Samach Gimel in Siach Sarfi Kodesh Chelek Beis. And also, if you might notice that there's clearer uh, sound on my voice, that is because I was able to get a microphone can't really see it it's off screen but it's a cute little microphone plugs into the USB and uh, it's awesome so anyway thank you Hashem so Sunday August 2nd after Tisha B'Av after Shabbos Nachum Baruch Hashem trying to be good Jews keep on going okay Kofsam Gimel it says in Mezhibuz there was a Zakin Echad a very old man his name was Rabbi Michtzi he was a Nechad he was a grandson of Rabbi Baruch of Mezhibosh. And he was very sick. And one of the breasts of Hasidim heard that this guy Rav Mechzi was sick in his house and he was suffering and he was very, very poor. And he realized I need to go do some kindness for this guy. And he went and he came to his house and he found him suffering. He found Rav Mechzi suffering very much. So right away he went and he bought wood to make a fire in his house to warm him up. And the Zakim was very in his spoil about this guy, and, and he took care of him, he got him food, whatever, so the Zakin Rav Michzi was very nispoil about this guy that he was doing such big acts of kindness for him, he didn't even know who he was, so he said, where are you from? So this guy who was doing the kindness answered him, I'm from the ear of Tulchin, so the Zakin said, Tulchin is not far from Breslov, right? And he said, correct, it is not far from Breslov, and I am also a Breslov Chassid, so then the Zakin said, if you're a Breslov Chassid, then I have to tell you the story that I saw with my own eyes. So this guy Rav Michzi said, when I was a little kid, I visited by my grandfather, Rabbi Baruch, and he loved me very much, and he used to sit on his lap, and next to my grandfather, a lot of tzaddikim would gather, and all these different big tzaddikim from the door would sit in his house and everything like that, and I remember, Ubein dibureim shedibru heschil v'dabir gam be'inin radchem hu rabbeinu akadosh. They started talking about Rabbeinu. Uh, and I saw that they were that they were smiling on him. Like they were kind of like making fun of him. And Rabbi Baruch Mezhbuz sat the whole entire time and he was quiet. And when they all left, Rabbi Baruch Mezhbuz turned to me and he said, What Rabbi Nachman has in the bottom of his foot, they don't even have in their head. So I asked him, so then why were you quiet? And why didn't you protest against him when you were making fun of him? So my grandfather said, Rabbi Nachman has a neshama that if you don't fight on it, then he can't live in this world. And therefore I was quiet. Rabbi Baruch saying, that Rabbi Nachman has a neshama that needs to be fought against in this world. That's why there was such a big machlekes against him. That's how he had to survive. Um, this story, Rabbi, this story is known. It's because, eleven o'clock. Dang it! I always forget to turn that off. Sorry. This story, Rabbi David, Rabbi David Yaakov ben Rabbi Chaim Hirsch Tulchin, heard this story from Rav Michti himself, the old guy who was sitting on the bed. Okay. Next story, Kuf Samach Dalit. It's known that Rabbi Nachman, when he was when he was young, he did a lot of sigufim. He fasted a lot and he made himself suffer in different ways. But that he fasted, there were some times that he fasted eighteen times a year from Shabbos to Shabbos. That means that from Maisei Shabbos till Friday night, he did not eat or drink at all, and he did this eighteen times in one year, right? From 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 the third meal of Shabbos until Friday night the next week he did not eat and this and this thing that he did this fasting that he did from Shabbos Shabbos was very very hidden from everybody and 
from, from most of his chassidim and even from his wife except for the person who took care of him except for his shamish right? and, and his shamish Rabbi, Rabbi Nachman warned him very much that he should never ever tell anybody one time one, and one time it happened that one evening that Rabbi Chaikel came to Rabbeinu who was, who was, and Rabbi Chaikel was a shamish and he saw Rabbeinu laying down with chulshat he was very weak like there was blood coming out of his eyes and his ears, right? Because this was already chati um, yimei That Rabbeinu already fasted Shabbos, Shabbos, and he fasted again. And this he fasted in a row, two Shabbos, Shabbos. So he was very weak. So he was so shocked to see Rabbi Nachman like this, right? And he, and, he, and, he, and he, what's it called? And he begged Rabbeinu, let me bring you food you know, to eat. And Rabbeinu saw that he was not going to be maskim to not eating. I mean, I mean, when, when, sorry, when Rabbi Chaikul saw that Rabbeinu was not maskim to eat, he, he threatened Rabbeinu. <laughs> he threatened him, Iyem, it's a lesson of threat. Um, he says, if you're not going to eat anything, then I'm going to tell everybody about your fasts, which Rabbeinu did not want, obviously. So without any choice, Rabbeinu said okay and Rabbi Chaikl ran and he got a chicken oh he took a chicken and he ran to the Shaykhit and he tells and on the way back he was already he was already taking off the feathers from it and he cooked it and he bought and he made Rabbi Nachman chicken soup and Rabbeinu said and then Rabbeinu when he walked into the room Rabbeinu was standing there with one foot on the floor and one foot on a bench and Rabbeinu said Chaikl sing me a song uh, like a nice song. Um, this, he said, Chaikul, sing me the song Nigin Hamo'ir, the Nigin that wakes people up. And this is the Nigin that was meforsum by the breast of Chasidim on the song Me'ain Oilam Haba. This is a certain breast of song from the words Me'ain Oilam Haba. It's a very nice tune um, that we sing on Friday night. So Rabbi Chaikul, who had a very nice voice, obviously had to listen to Rabbeinu, and he and he kept on singing it and Rabbeinu said sing it again and sing it again and all these things he sang like this the whole entire night and Rabbeinu stood next to him and he didn't eat the food at all and when the sun came up Rabbeinu pushed away the soup because it was very cold and he said and he continued fasting so that was one of the ways that Rabbeinu was able to continue doing his fasts the last Rosh Hashanah of Rabbeinu's life which was in Uman in the year 1810 he said, Aaron Einenu Uberla Einenu. Right? And his kavana was that Rabbi Aaron, who was the Rav of Brasov, he did not come to the kibbutz Anash. And because they, he wanted to go back to Breslov, I think, to be the Rav. That's the whole story I think I told in another video. And also Berla, who was another Breslov Ruchasid, who was a very Ish Pashat Meir Venitia, Gamhu Laiba. Right? What Rabbeinu was saying is that both of them are mamish equal when it comes to the kibbutz of Rosh Hashanah. There's no gedolim, there's no ketanim. Everybody's the same. So when you come to the kibbutz of Rabbeinu and Uman, we're all equal. Rabbeinu said to Rabbi Avram, who was the grandfather of Rabbi Avram ben Rav Nachman, Sobe Shal Rav Avram Nachman, Al Aviv Rabbi Yisrael, on his father, Rabbi Yisrael, your father's chachmas kind of give him a lot of trouble and mess him up because his father was a big buyer and a lamb in Godel. He was always thinking crazy things, thinking things through, and chachmas and all these things. And he was, and therefore it led him to svaris and pilpulim that were not right. Okay? One time, Rabbeinu said to his daughter, Adul, don't let them take your soul when you die until you see me. Okay? And before she died in the year Tafrish Yudalit, they heard how she said, Baruch Abba Abba, welcome Abba. That means that she saw her father right before she died, Rabbi Nachman, and then she died right away. So she kept to her word. That's a very crazy man. Okay, one time Rabbi Nachman was going from Breslov to Uman and he passed through the city of Teplik. And the Toishve Teplik, the people who lived in Teplik, um, 
um, escorted him out of the city until the Kfar Rasasha, which was next to it. Shisham Hismich Rabbeinu Kalma Shalom Kaidim was a as I Mordechai dying Laav Basin Beer Tablet. In Kfar Rasha, Kfar Rasasha, Rabbeinu put Rabbi Mordechai Dayan to the, he wanted him to be this Dayan over there and Rabbi made it that he was a Dayan in this small kfar. It's written in Kiv, in Yemei Mornat. I bought you a Dayan kosher when they got to that city. Okay. Be'ir Uman there was a there was a base Knesset that was built by a guy named Rabbi Kalman. He has exclamation points around his name. So there's a story. Obviously, he was from the Negide Vashiri era. Uman he was a very rich person in the times of Rabbeinu in the city of Uman. And the Hoyu Mechanim is a basic Knesset that is a Rav Kalman's clothes. And they used to call this basic Knesset Rabbi Kalman's clothes. That was the nickname for it. The Rabbi Lev Mikastantin, Leizik Nusa Kishlo Hoyu Kfar Bechoy Chilovi Mahir the Chloe Shalanash, right? And when Rabbi Lev Constantine, when he was very old, and he wasn't able to come because he was very weak. He wasn't able to come from the city. I mean, from other parts of the city of Uman to this Kloiz of Anash. He would come and sit in the Kloiz of Rabbi Kalman because I think that was close to him. And there, in Rabbi Kalman's Kloiz, they would also heat the base Knesses. Mashain came to Kloiz, it's at Slain Shari Karmoid. In the cloys by the by the breast of the season was very cold. Makes sense. Probably didn't have money to heat it up. Visham Asak Ba Vaid Sasham Bikimas Khatois and there he would do a Vaid Hashem by waking up for Khatois with Bikhiyas and you cry and scream out to Hashem and Dav and everything. So one time the Shamish of this cloys, of Rabbi Kalman's cloys, saw him that he was crying during Tvila. And he says, Why do you cry? Right? Because he thought that maybe he was. Uh, he thought that they were crying. That this that this guy was crying because he didn't have any money. He said, "Why are you crying? Let me tell you a story from your Rebbe, and then you won't cry anymore." And he says, "This this guy who was the shamish of Rav Kalman's clothes told a story. He said your father. He said sorry. He said my father was from the uh, was from the Anshe Chevra Kedisha of the city of Uman at the time that Rabbeinu died, and." With his death, we did not change anything of his levaya of Anshe Chadusha to Plu Begufe Kaddish, right? We did everything the same for everyone else. And my father was was the person who was in charge of putting Rabbi Nachman inside the caver. And my father told me that when I grabbed onto Rabbeinu to put him inside the caver, right? And when I got close to the ground, right in front of him, out of nowhere came this huge light and it just took Rabbi Nachman. <laughs> well, Omar and he says, who put Rabbi Nachman on the karka? I don't know. I did not. And when my father told me the story, he said I should never have any machlokes with any breast of chasidim because of this ma'isa. Because obviously something very holy happened. We see him as Shamash, but Amr Rabbi Leib, and the Shamash said to Rabbi Leib, Im came, why are you crying after you have such a Rebbe who's so holy like this? Unbelievable. It is known that Rabbi Nachman spent Shavuos, Chag Shavuos, one year, in the year Tav Kuf Samach Zayin, in the year Zaslov. And he said to the Hasidim, to not come with him at all. Do not go do not come to Zaslav to be with me like we are every year. I'm going to be here alone. But Rabbi Naftali, Shayada Ba Emes Ratsan Rabbeinu, Shayavoyo love. But Rabbi Naftali knew that Rabbeinu's real Ratsan was that they should come to him. He wrote a letter to all the places, Shipizum Bamanash where all the Khsidim lived, and he hurried them up that they should all come to Rabbeinu and Zaslav for Shavuos. And what happened? Everybody came. A lot of chassidim came. And Rabbeinu came, and Rabbeinu was sitting there in a small shul that was shaykh to the chayatim of the ear. That was shaykh to the tailors of the city. 
Before Shavuos, they finished up counting Sviros Oymer, and they would always count the last Sviros Oymer with his Slavos and his Oyrus. And the Shamash with his Beis Knesses came, and he didn't know that these guys were the were the men of Rabbi Nachman, and he complained upon Rabbi Nachman that, that these, that some Hasidim Mishunim, weird Hasidim, strange Hasidim came to the Beis Knesses, that they're making so much noise with their davening and their marich and the svira. And he's not able to lock the shul. And Rabbeinu didn't say anything, but he smiled a little bit. And afterwards, the Shamash realized that these guys were, were Rabbi Nachman's chassidim, and he was mispaish ba'atzmei. Um, he was embarrassed. And every day, more and more people came to be with Rabbeinu for Shavuos. <coughs> and again, another story. When Rabbeinu was in Zasla for Shavuos, continuation of that story, it's told over in the Sefer Yimei or not, which is Rabbi Nassim's biography, autobiography, the canal, Rabbi Nassim and Rabbi Naftali, they were awake for three nights in a row. Hainu two nights of the Chag, and outside of Eretz Yisrael, it's two days of Shua, so two nights of the Chag. They stayed up all night learning and serving Hashem. Echem belayla hashlishi, dahainu b'moitzah Chag, on the third night, on Moitzi Shavuos, right, when they all, when all the Chesidim were leaving from Rabbi Nachman, and when Rabbeinu went outside from the Seder, uh, when Rabbeinu left the room for a minute, they fell on the floor because they were so tired. And when and when Rabbeinu found them sleeping, he said to him, "Why are you sleeping? You're your, your years away." And they got up and they did more of it. They stayed up for three nights in a row. Rabbeinu warned the Hasidim very much to always pray and daven. Shachras as early as you can, like it's taught in Sikh Saran. That if it's a, that it's possible that that day it's a gazer for you to die, so at least you're ready after Davani. That's Givalt. The Rav had Sadik Rai Baruch of Mezbush Doid Rabbeinu Hu Sheshtad Ola Tayyus Rabbeinu Bezesh Yavar Rabbeinu Ladir Be'er Brasil, right? Uh, Baruch Mezbuz, who was the uncle of Rabbi Nachman, he was the one who made the effort and 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 put in a good word. Sorry, that mm. that um, that uh, Rabbi Nachman should be able to come move into the city of Brussels. In those days, it was not when somebody moved into the city, they have to like check it out with the city, and he was a rebbe. So, uh, so so Rabbi Baruch worked it out. Um, and he spoke with three of the rich guys in Brussels, Benayim, who. Rabbi Baruch spoke with these guys, and the three guys were Moshe Chinkis, Rabbi Mordechai Rotenzeit. Uh, I don't know what the third one is, and that uh, they should give Rabbeinu a sach rendel midei chaydish, one rendel per month. I guess that was enough to live on. Chein hisig mehem sach shloish rendel the mafreya avur et zayis havaras adira, and he also was able to get out of them three rendel to already pay for Rabbi Nachman's move. From the heirs La Ipoli to Brussel. And they not only did they agree with this, but they also doubled the amount. They gave Rabin two rendels per month, and they gave him six rendels already for the move. Alright, I think we're going to do two more stories here. And that's it. Rabbi Lipa. Who was Niskarif to Marnat? Sorry, who was Rabbi Lipa? Who came close to Rabbeinu with Rab Nasan? He also had a big part in 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 Rab Nasan coming close to Rabbeinu. He actually afterwards became far away from Rabbeinu Kiyadua. And uh, I guess we'll hear the story. Pam, one time when it was Suda Shlishis by Rabbi Nachman. Uh, Rabbi Nachman was sitting there, sitting tired at the table, 
and a businessman came in and called Rabbi Le- uh, and called Rabbi Lipa to the outside. It was ready after Shabbos. And he started speaking to him about his businesses and Asakim and everything. And this was a bizarre Gadol. In the middle of this Torah and everything like that, that he should leave when Rabbeinu was saying Torah and deal with business. Then Rabbeinu said over this little mimer from Tikkun Ezoyer that's bought in the Torah of Chav Kimmel in Lakut Imran it says the words Hai Utra Chayich is behind Bahai Alma of the Vasar Ketilas line which translates to Hashiras Misachech is Adam the riches play with a man in this world Besayif Oid HaRegism and at the end they kill him right like the the riches kill you at the end V'neskayim Di Brazeh B'Nechtoi Rabbi Moshe Velvo, and this words were in the sky, I think, in of Lipa's grandson, whose name was Rabbi Moshe Velvo. At one time, Kishinosa in Megloinoi, Hagoy Sha'ova, that's Loi, his man Rav, that one time he was going with his wagon, and the driver that worked in him was this non Jew, took the Eglin from the way, they went off the side path, and they went into a very thick forest, and he came onto Rav Velvo and tried to kill him. And Rav Moshe Velvo um, asked this guy who was going to kill him, at least, you know, do one more favor for me and let me daven about this. Let, let me daven one Tfilas Mincha before I die. And the wagon driver said, okay. And he davened with with insane amount of crying and pouring out his soul. And after he finished his tfila, the Egloin had a lot of Charat that he was going to do this, and he asked him for forgiveness, and he said, "Okay." And when they went back to the house, said, "But you can't work for me anymore." He said to him, "He said to him, thank you for sparing my life, but you can't work to work for me anymore." And he fired him. And afterwards, Harogoy Nechet Ha'Egloin. I think the grandson of this Egloin, who was going to kill Rav Moshe Velvel, actually came back and killed Rav Moshe Velvel. V'neskayim anivuus Rabbeinu, Shalom ulu b'soyif ha'regas ha'isam. So, yeah. So Rabbeinu was saying that this, since Rav Lipa went outside and was did a bizoyin, so he got punished by having his because I guess they were rich, they were businessmen. And it doesn't say why, how Rabbi Lipa was actually in Israchi from Rabbi. I thought that was going to be a story, but it's a different story about his grandson, Rabbi Moshe Okay, last story. When Rabbi Nu sent Mornat, Rabbi Nassim, to his father in law, that, that his father in law should give him some position of Rabbanus in a city. That's under his dealings, because Rav Nassim's father was a very big guy in the Rabbanim and all those things back in the day, like it's told over in the Sefer Yimei Marnat, right? Rav Nassim begged in front of Rabbi Nachman that he was like he was, he was he was you know he was talking to Rabbeinu and he said he was very scared to take on a position of Rabbanus. because it was a very big responsibility, and Rabbeinu said, but then. Everyone's scared. Who's going to be a rav? He's saying everybody's scared to be a rav. And Rabbeinu says, And he said, is really taking a position of leadership the right way to do it? And Rabbeinu says, This is the truth. And Rabbeinu and Rabbeinu asked him again, Really, 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 it's the truth? And Rabbeinu says, And then Rabbeinu said, And then Rabbeinu said, really want the truth then don't be a Rav and, and Rav Nassim was saved from this from being a Rav alright guys that was a good day of stories and uh, I hope everybody is doing well and uh, learning and chilling and doing all the good things in the world everyone should have a great day